be with you. And good evening. Uh, this is uh, our last Lenten services, so we just want to uh, begin giving thanks uh, to the parents of our youth that provided some great meals for us these last uh, six weeks. I know we had a couple, a couple weeks we couldn't uh, gather because of the weather, the snow. So uh, was there an adjective before that noun or no? There, I don't think there was. In my mind there was, but... Uh, <laughs> All right, so, but um, that's our, our, our uh, youth uh, parents help provide, and some of our youth help serve, so we're uh, thankful for them, and also thankful that you come and support them, and uh, that you uh, uh, fellowship together uh, these uh, Wednesdays. And then all of our music leaders, those that have helped us with our Hold an Evening Prayer, Ryan Stoltzberry, Jerry Potma, Tammy Moss, Beth Borstead, uh, Darren, hi there, honey. <laughs> Eden Orada. Uh, Darren Prestolt, um, and then of course our uh, thanks to Chris and Tammy uh, for accompanying us every night during during Lent, and then our birthday boy tonight, John Wager. Happy birthday, John. And why don't we stand and sing to your neighbor now a greeting, an evening greeting. Okay, we'll stand and then just offer them a greeting. Then you don't have to sing if you don't want to. We have a, a following for those that join us on our online services, and then also that uh, we, this year we've been on the radio as well. It's kind of a delayed service, but we're uh, on the radio offering our worship service for our community members at 7.30, so we give thanks for that. But let's turn to the camera in the back right by Emily, and then wave and uh, greet those that are joining us online. And then we'll begin our Holden Evening Prayer. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light, no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your Every dance 
morning star of night, make us shine with gentle justice. Let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way. Loving Spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless May God be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways. And you are the light and life of all creation. come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. You may be seated. homily text uh, this evening is a reading from the last portion of uh, John 19 and and then the beginning of uh, John 20. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. And early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. 
And the angel said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rubboni, which means teacher. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So tonight is our last night of our Lenten services. I know that's an incredible disappointment for all of you. I could just hear that in your, your, your voices. Uh, our, last, our last Lenten service. Tonight's theme is eternal life. And it's captured in the last two chapters of the gospel and in the very uh, last portion of the 19th chapter of John that uh, we all should have now gotten through the whole gospel of John uh, from beginning to the end. So how have you been doing on that, reading the gospel of John? I, I don't think that we've ever taken a gospel, at least the time that I've been here at Grace and read through the whole uh, gospel and then kind of dissecting each of the themes. So it's, it's, been, uh, it's uh, been a fulfilling a Lenten season and a Lenten study, at least uh, from my perspective. So I hope that you found it to be productive, um, and I hope that you found it fruitful for your own personal spirituality. Uh, the New Testament is about the gospel, the good news, told from multiple perspectives, right? And John is just one of those perspectives among, among many. John lifts up these themes in the gospel, uh, even uh, changing some things uh, from Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke in creative ways to make larger theological points that we've been able to kind of dig into a little deeper this, uh, this season of Lent. So last week we moved from the arrest and the trial of the, and crucif- crucifixion of Jesus, and we kind of said that, you know, we can learn about that. It's from Gabbatha to Golgotha to the garden. All right, some of you, thank you. The birthday boy got it. Some of you got it too, but all G's, right? Gabbatha, Golgotha to, uh, to the garden. Um, and so now we come to the theme of eternal life or the resurrection theme for tonight. And I think it's important to note that this Easter event really is uh, the big deal, right, for the Christian church. It's also important to remember that the church does not preach Easter or resurrection as an event that happened a long time ago or an idea we hope people will consider. Rather, we are making a confession that Jesus is the first member of eternal life the first member of an entirely new family, and that his resurrection inaugurates a new creation and continues to this day for you and for me. And if you don't believe me, then just read Paul's letter to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23. You can jot that down because that's precisely what Paul says. So for this reason, through our proclamation... We are announcing and indeed ushering in a new reality. For we, you and I, are now defined by this resurrection grace, promised a place in the household by the Son of God, Jesus Christ, born from above by the one who reveals God's parental heart to each and every one of us and pursued by God's love for as long and far as we may run until hearing God call us by our names. And we realize that we have been known and loved our whole lives. So let's look into that promise 
a little. That sounds good, but let's look into that promise a little deeper tonight, shall we? It's not a rhetorical question. I mean, if you want to, then just maybe just say yes, you know, a resounding yes, or make a resounding no. It's fine with me. Shall we look into it? Yes. There we go. I know you're a little sleepy after that lasagna, so I got to kind of keep you on task here. All right, so if you want to take out your Bibles, you don't need to, but if you want to, Bibles are in front of you. We keep them real handy right in front of you in the pew racks. We're in the Gospel of John. We're going to look, um, I started reading from the end of chapter 19, but I'm really going to look now uh, from uh, chapter 20 in uh, uh, chapter 20 in the Gospel of John, just beginning with verse 1. So you can follow along if you, if you wish, if it keeps you awake. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb before sunrise, only to find that the stone was rolled away. So she was anxious and fearful. She runs back to the disciples and claims that somebody stole Jesus' body. So then Peter and the beloved disciple, some say that this is now John, the writer of the Gospel of John, So Peter and and the beloved disciple run back to the tomb to find her story because it seems to be true. They are also afraid that somebody stole Jesus' body, so they wanted to see that for themselves. So when they get there, the stone is gone, and so is the body. But the linen wrappings, the linen wrappings remain, and they are folded nicely in the tomb. So this is the Easter story. This is it. Not really like the Easter that we are known to celebrate, right, on Easter Sunday. The great hymns of praise, no shouts of He lives. The first Easter story was really a story of confusion, right? With the fact in front of Mary's face, she reasonably assumes Jesus' tomb had been robbed. Easter morning begins with these jumbled, unpleasant emotions, fear and shock, even grief. We tend to think of Easter as this grand celebration, but there was, in all actuality, very little celebration on that first Easter morning. So as we prepare as in our congregations to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus in a few days' time, I mean, I'm struck really, when I read that uh, today, I'm struck by the contrast. The contrast with that first Easter morning, what what it was actually like for Mary and Peter and, and what they did, distress, bewilderment, disbelief, and then how we tend to celebrate Easter. Very different. The disciples return home, but then Mary remains in her despair, in her grief. John tells us that she's crying. She peers into the tomb. Tears are streaming down her face, only to find two angels in white sitting beside the spot Jesus' body had once been laid. So when most people encounter angels, they fall down in fear. Almost every time an angel appears in Scripture, The people that see the angel fall down and the angels say, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. But not here. Not to Mary. These angels ask Mary, why are you crying? And she answers. Her distress at the loss of Jesus overwhelms even the fear she might normally have experienced at the appearance of an angel. So she turns around and she, she sees Jesus, but she doesn't recognize that it is Jesus, right? So she sees him, but she doesn't see him. She thinks she's seeing a gardener. She's in a garden, remember? Gabatha, Golgotha to the garden. She assumes that this is a gardener, this, this Jesus. And then she pours out her dilemma. She pours out her despair, her grief, to who she thinks is the gardener. Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will retrieve him. I'll go, I'll go get him. And then finally, the good news of Easter pokes through. 
Here it is. Easter. Are you ready? It's again not a rhetorical question. Are you ready for the good news of Easter? Yes. All right, there we go. Here it is. Jesus says to her, Mary. Jesus calls her by her name. She turned toward him and called out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. So, so Jesus calls Mary by her name, and Mary responds, teacher, Rabboni. It is only when Jesus names Mary that the light of Easter breaks through. So right there it is. The Easter story began in darkness and confusion. Literally, I mean, it began before the break of day. The sun had not come up yet. And spiritually, the story begins with shock and fear. No one remembers or believes that Jesus rose as Jesus said he would, but no one remembered it. And now that it happened, no one believed it. They fear the worst that is humanly possible has happened. So none see what God made not only possible, but actual by raising Jesus from the dead. Even when Mary comes face to face with Jesus, she initially cannot see him until he calls her name. She's in the garden, so she thinks it's just a gardener. The disciples race away, but no one celebrates until Jesus calls out Mary's name. So to think about what it means for Mary to go from this fear and trembling that she felt, that grief and despair that was so deep inside of her heart, to hear Jesus say her name on that first Easter morning, and then to see Jesus standing right before her. I wonder what it would be like to wake up on Easter morning and hear Jesus call my name. I mean, I need a little prodding out of bed on Easter morning. But to hear Jesus call my name, imagine that. So that is Easter in many ways. Jesus calling my name. Jesus calling your name. Jesus calling your name and then you seeing him, really seeing him. I don't know how whatever did happen happened on that first Easter, but I've come to believe that this story is less about explaining, less about understanding, less about making sense of or even believing what happened on that day, and more about experiencing what that day means for you and for me. So I've got some ideas on that. I would like to tell you three things that I think the story of the resurrection tells us. So would you like to hear those three things? Yes. All right, okay. So first, first it means a promise, a promise of a future. That's the first thing. The promise means we can never say about life, this is it. This is all there is, or this is how it always will be. Our resurrection is not a future event, something yet to happen. It is a present and everyday reality that promises us a future and the chance, chance that this moment will be transformed. This moment that we're in now will be transformed and will be changed. So that's number one. Easter is a promise. Second, it means that we always have hope. It means we have hope for our lives and the lives for those whom we love. We have hope for something absolutely new, a new birth, a new life. We have hope that our lives matter. It means we have hope in the midst of our doubts. It means that we have hope in the midst of our uncertainties. It means we have hope despite the riskiness of life. And when nothing makes sense and the odds are against us, we still have hope. So Easter means that we always have hope. This hope means that we live with a great perhaps. 
and an openness to the future. We hope against hope for the unexpected possibility of the impossible in our lives. So one, we have a promise. Two, we have a hope. And third, it means that we have a call. All right? So promise, hope, and then call. The resurrection is a calling to our lives. It's a calling on our lives. And this call awaits a response. We are being called to believe in life because life is precious beyond belief. So we, this is what we're called to. We are being called to appreciate the opportunities of every moment given to us and to neither waste nor take for granted a single moment, a single one. We are being called to live more fully alive and to take the risk that there is always more life awaiting us even when it is unimaginable or unforeseeable and seemingly impossible. The resurrection is a wooing of us. It is a call on our lives, calling us into life, more life and more life and more life and new life. It's God's yes to us and it asks us to answer, to act, of saying yes, yes to life, yes to more life, yes to new life. So first a promise, then a hope, and then a call. And I wonder, though, if we often misunderstand this story as being unique and exclusive to Jesus, the resurrection story. I wonder about that. What if it was never intended to be primarily about Jesus, the resurrection story, the Easter story? Maybe the story is as much or more about what is happening to us as it is what happened to Jesus. A promise, a hope, and a call. So that's what our resurrected life looks like. So I actually have three questions that I'd like to ask you if you want me to ask you these three questions to apply this to your life. Would you like to hear the three questions that I have for you? Yes. All right. First question. First question is this. What is the promise giving you today? What is the Easter promise giving you today? In what ways it, is it opening your life? That's the first question. The second question, I bet you know what it's going to be. What is your hope today? What are you hoping for today? What is your deep hope against hope? What are you hoping for that seems too good to be true and against all odds? The second question, what is your hope today? And then third, you know what it's going to be. What is your calling? What is life calling for and asking from you today. What is your calling? What do you need to do or change in order to say yes to that resurrection calling in your life? Now, I can't answer those questions for you or tell you how you should answer. You know why? Because this is your resurrection. This is your Easter. Amen.
from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one, humble the proud of heart. You have cast a mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and bless me all my life through.
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, give us today our daily, daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. All of our days. Amen. And we go in Christ's peace. Amen.